Sup, y'all. This is 9-4. Factoring to solve quadratic equations. This is a very important section because there will always be end of course exam questions that involve this topic. So listen carefully. Here we go. What you will be doing is finding the solutions to quadratic equations. And from the previous video, we talked about how those solutions are also called the zeros of a function. They're also called the roots of a function. And if you need a better explanation of that, go back and rewatch the 9-3 video. We are trying to find solutions to these equations, and they are called the zeros or the roots of the function. What we will be using in this section is something called the zero product property. And this is something that you already know. Anything times zero is zero. We've been talking about this all year. Uh, it's a property, and it's a property that is used in this section. So just remember, we're going to be trying to make things multiply by zero. That's kind of the goal. So here's an example. Let's say we have x plus 3 and x plus 2, two different binomials, but they're multiplying together as if we were going to FOIL them. But since we're now trying to find the solutions, we need to find the zeros. The zeros of the function are the x values that will make the function become zero. So you basically just have to set your equations equal to zero, and that's how you're going to get your answers to all of these problems. So, for example, uh, if x plus 3 equaled zero, well then we would have zero times x plus 2. It doesn't matter what x plus 2 you know, becomes, we are multiplying it by zero. And zero times anything is zero. So basically, if we can figure out what would make x plus 3 become zero, we would be finding one of the solutions to the quadratic equation. And by the way, if you need to pause and back that explanation up, I would recommend doing that because now we're going to start solving. Like, you would just subtract 3 from both sides, and 0 minus 3 is x equals negative 3. Or you subtract 2 from both sides, and then uh, 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So the solutions to this problem are x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 2. Those are the answers, negative 3 and negative 2. We are trying to figure out what x values will make the entire expression become 0. And we will be exploring that in a bunch more examples in the slides to come. So here's another example. If you want to pause the video real quickly and see if you get it, go ahead and do that right now. You could even do this mentally. All right, so the first thing you would want to do is set 4t plus 1 equal to 0. <clears throat> Again, uh, these are binomials that are multiplying together, so anything times 0 is 0. If you can figure out what makes 4t plus 1 equal 0, well, then you will be solving one of the solutions for the quadratic equation. And you would have to subtract 1 from both sides, so 0 minus 1 is negative 1. And then you would divide both sides by 4 to get t alone, and negative 1 divided by 4 is negative 1 fourth. So that's one of the answers. You can absolutely get fractions when you are doing these problems. t minus 2 would also have to be set equal to 0. That is very easy. Just add 2 to both sides. And t equals 2 is your second answer. So both of those solutions are the answers to this quadratic equation. Here are four more practice problems. If you would also like to pause the video and try to work out those, that would be fine. Uh, I will also work out problem D when all this is said and done. So um, pause the video, work those out really quickly. Or just wait and see and, you know, whatever. All right, so there are the answers. Uh, you can see them all right there. Let me work out uh, answer D really quickly. 7n minus 2 would need to be set equal to 0, and 5n minus 4 as well. You would add 2 to both sides and get 7n equals 2, and then divide both sides by 7, and then you get n equals 2 sevenths. Add 4 to both sides, and then you would get 5n equals 4. Divide by 5, and you get 4 fifths. So this is the main idea that we're going to be doing and exploring in the slides to come. Uh, that's the main body of what is being talked about here, that you are trying to set things equal to zero. And you are trying to figure out uh, what values will make the individual binomials become zero. 
So sometimes you're not going to get a, a quadratic equation where it is two binomials already worked out for you. Uh, most of the time you are going to get a trinomial. So if you hadn't realized by now, the whole idea of the section is that we're going to be factoring. Uh, so, you know, if you need to go back and rewatch the videos on 8-5 and 8-6, you might want to do that so you can be reminded about how to factor, because I won't be going into heavy depth with factoring since it's already covered in another video. This is just going to be a review. So, uh, you would begin by asking yourself, you know, we know there's going to be two binomials set up, and because we have an x squared term in front, well, you know that there are going to be x's in the first positions. Uh, next, you would want to ask yourself the question, what adds to get 8 and multiplies to get 15? It's not 1 and 15. It's going to be 3 and 5. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 plus 5 is 8. And then because the 8 is positive, you know that your 3 and 5 have to also be positive. So uh, this is what you have to do when you have a trinomial quadratic equation and you're trying to figure out the solutions. You have to first factor it into the binomials that made it. And then you set it equal to 0 and then you proceed with what I just did on the previous slide. And that is the flow of pretty much this entire lesson. If you already have the binomials, then you can just start figuring out what makes the binomials become zero. If you have a trinomial, you have to do the factoring process first, and then you figure out what makes the individual parts equal zero. So we make x plus three equals zero and x plus five equals zero. You would subtract three, and you would subtract 5 to get x alone in both of those cases, and you would get x equals negative 3, and then x equals negative 5. Of course, if you can do that in your head, you do not need to write out that work. I'm just demonstrating it for the sake of the slides. Here are three more practice problems. Uh, more importantly, you will notice that part C, you have a 2 in front of the a squared, meaning you have to do the AC method, where you multiply 2 times 18. Again, if you do not remember how to factor these kinds of trinomials, especially this trinomial, that would be section 8-6. That is a previous video that you could go watch. Alright, so pause the video, try to work those out. When you hit resume, you're going to see the answers. Alright, so uh, there are the solutions. If you uh, got them, awesome. If you didn't, oh well. If you need to see a quick review of how to do a factoring problem like part C, well, that will be covered right now. The first thing you would do is multiply 2 times 18. That would be 36. You would then ask yourself, what factors of 36 can add or subtract to get you negative 15? And that would be uh, 12 and 3. 12 times 3 is 36. 12 plus 3 is 15. But in this case, we would actually have negative 12 minus 3 because it's a negative 15 that we have there. So rewrite your uh, trinomial, splitting the middle term. As you can see, the negative 15 has become a negative 3 and a negative 12. Group the first two and the last two binomials together. You will notice we have a negative sign in the middle, and that is a big no-no. You want to make sure to change it into a plus sign and then make the 12 negative because subtracting is the same thing as adding a negative number. You always want a plus sign to be in the middle. Next, factor out the GCFs. Uh, in 2a squared minus 3a, they both share the letter a, but 2 and 3 have nothing in common. So the only thing we can take out is a single a. Negative 12 and 18 both share the number 6, but remember the 12 is negative and you do not want to have a, a negative number as the first thing written down inside a binomial. You would want to factor out a negative 6 as your GCF. And then lastly, the a and the negative 6 make one of your binomials, the 2a minus 3 makes the other one, and you are done with the factoring part of this problem. Again, that is 8-6. Make sure you know how to do it. You will now set those individual parts equal to 0. a minus 6 equals 0 and 2a minus 3. Very easily add 6 to both sides and you get a equals 6. 
But in the second one, you have to add 3 first, and you would get 2a equals 3. And then you would divide both sides by 2, and you would get a equals 3 halves. Again, you will get fraction answers for these problems, and that is okay. All right, so here's a slight conceptual question. Uh, whoops, let's back that up for a second. All right, so now we're being asked, what are the solutions of x squared plus 14x equals negative 49? Uh, as you could have seen from all the previous slides, all of these quadratic equations are set equal to zero. If you don't have zero on one side, then you're not going to be able to get the answer as easily as you could. So if you get an example like this where you do not have zero on one of the sides, well, you want to move all of your terms to one side. And because we already have the x squared and the 14x on the left, let's add 49 to both sides and then move it over to the right. So we have x squared plus 14x plus 49. And now, negative 49 plus 49, well, that cancels out to 0. So we now have a quadratic equation set equal to 0, so we can now get the answer. What you would want to observe is that because there is a 1 in front of the x squared, and 1 and 49 are both perfect squares, well, you can take their square roots. This is a special case binomial, which is in section 8-7. You can go back and watch that video if you need a review on the special case binomials. 49 and 1 are both perfect squares. You can square root the first and last terms. And then because 49 has a square root of positive 7 or negative 7, the reason why we're writing positive 7 here, well, that's because the 14 is positive. If the 14 were negative, we would have written negative 7. So in any case, uh, the only thing that makes x plus 7 equal 0 is if x is negative 7. But since you have the same binomial twice, well, then there's just going to be one solution. So uh, that's why x, my, x equals negative 7 is the only answer in this case. You have the same binomial twice. Uh, part B, a little conceptual. <clears throat> Basically, uh, why do quadratic equations of the form, you can see them right there and see it right there, uh, why do they only have one real number solution? Well, that's what we literally just explored, but here's a better explanation of it, I guess. Uh, if you, let's just use A as, uh, as 7, you know, don't be confused when you see letters that are an X inside an equation. You can always assign values to them and just work it out as if they were numbers. So, so let's make A equal 7. Well, when you, uh, when you work this out, you will find that the root is going to always be the same binomial twice, so there isn't going to be another solution. So, uh, so basically, if you remember from when we first learned about these, uh, the square root ones, uh, if you square root the 49, you would get se if you square root the 49, you will get seven. So that's why we have now written seven squared over here, and uh, there would be a one squared written in front of the x squared, but one times anything is itself. But if you remember, a way that you could check the middle term if you did it correctly, if you multiply the a and c positions, so uh, that would be 1 and 7, 1 times 7 is 7, and then you double it, well then you should get the middle term, which in this case 2 times 7 would be 14. It's just an idea that we talked about in the 8-7 video. If you need to go back and revisit it, cool. If you understand how to do the perfect square factoring, then that's fine too. Uh, the main idea is that since we have the same binomial twice, you are only going to get one solution. There isn't going to be a second solution. So x plus 7 times x plus 7 is x plus 7 squared. And you could just set that equal to 0 because the only answer is going to be negative 7. So there's just one solution. All right, so here's some practice problems, guys. Uh, feel free to pause the video right now. When you hit resume, you're going to see all the answers appear right down here in the corner. Uh, so get some practicing in, and then check the answers, and then we'll see how you do. All right, there are the answers. Hopefully you got a lot of them correct. Uh, you will notice on a lot of these, or not a lot of these ones, but just uh, one like number 25, they use the plus minus sign. Rather than writing positive 4 thirds and negative 4 thirds, you can always use the plus minus sign. That means the same thing. So here's a quick summary of what we went over. Uh, basically, you will solve quadratic equations by factoring and then setting the binomials that you get equal to zero. That's the key part. 
You're setting these equal to zero because you're trying to find the zeros of the equation. If you need to go back and watch the 9-3 video to better understand what the zeros are, you should probably go and do that. Secondly, the zeros of a function are the values where the parabola is crossing the x-axis. That is illustrated in the 9-3 video where the parabola crosses the x-axis your value for y is going to be zero, so your solutions, look at the parabola right now, look down here, are right there, where the parabola crosses the x-axis, those yellow dots. So that is what we were basically finding in this section. You can use equations and set them equal to zero, or you can graph and look where the parabola crosses the x-axis. But that is how you find the zeros of a function, which are the solutions to the function. So uh, study up, guys. I'll see you in class tomorrow, and we'll see how you did.